Welcome. Here's a classic mathematical puzzle, the great locker problem. So imagine in a school corridor there are 100 lockers in a row, each initially closed. And 100 students can perform the following experiment. The first student can head down and open every locker. Student number two is going to head down and touch every second locker, thereby closing every second locker. The third student is going to head down and change the state of every third locker. So some will be open, some will be closed. So he'll close any lockers that are open and open any lockers that are closed. The fourth student is going to then head down and touch every fourth locker, clean, changing its state, and so on, all the way down to the 100th student who changes every 100th locker, which is just the very last one. That's all that's left. So the question is, which lockers are left open? And if you watch the first part of this video, you see some students at St. Mark's School actually performed the experiment, and something mighty surprising appeared. All the lockers whose numbers were square numbers are the ones that were left open. So do watch that video. It's actually really quite exciting. So what I'd like to do in this second follow-up video is try to explain why do the square numbers appear. Here goes. So let me just clear the screen and draw for myself some lockers. So let's see what happens. I think I've just drawn about 16 lockers here. So uh, first of all, student number one goes down and opens every locker. So I guess I'll do a black dot means open. So da da da, opens every locker and off we go. He has a very exciting time. In fact, that was the first thing Sheng Han did in that first video. Then student number two is going to come down and change the state of every second locker. One, two, change it. One, two, change it. Ein, zwei, da, and so on, all the way down, changing every third locker. La 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 la. And then student number three comes down and changes every third locker. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oops, I need my pen for that, which is now going to be open. One, two, three. Now it's closed. Oops. One, two, three is open. One, two, three is closed. So let me erase those closed ones, and so on. So it looks like, you know, initially we've got some patterns going on here, but things start to get quite jumbled when you get the fourth student coming down, the fifth student, and so forth. The patterns you see start to become a little more chaotic. So why would it be that the square numbers appear? Well, it's very clear, for example, that student number one is going to be left, the locker number one is going to be left open. Student number one touched locker number one, and uh, no other student thereafter is going to touch locker number one. So what? One was touched once, and that was it. So let's look at another locker. Say, let's look at number, locker number 12. Which students touched lockers number 12? Well, certainly student 1 touched 12. He touched everything. Student 2 touched 12. She touches every second locker. Student 3 touched 12. She, he touched every third locker. Student 4 touched 12, every fourth locker. Student 5 did not touch locker number 12, because she touched every fifth locker, and 5 is not a factor of 12. In fact, 6 is... The student who touched 12, and the next student who touched 12 is student number 12 itself. Locker number 12 is student number 12. So actually, we see that the students whose numbers are the factors of the 12 are the ones who touched locker 12. And since 12 has six factors, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this locker was touched six times. It was initially open, as uh, initially closed. Um, so that'll be open, then closed, open, then closed, open, then closed. So locker number 12 will be closed. So it looks like each locker is actually touched the fact, number of factors, the number of times given by the number of factors it possesses. So for example then, that means locker number 10 has factors 1, 2, 5, and 10, and we can see it will be touched four times. In fact, a little common uh, curiosity about factors, they always come in pairs. For example, 1 and 10, 1 times 10 makes a pair of factors, and 2 and 5 makes a pair of factors, 2 times 5 is 10. Back to 12, 1 and 12 is a pair, 2 and 6 is a pair, 3 and 4 is a pair. So actually, it looks like all numbers have an even number of factors, in which case we'd expect all lockers to be touched an even number of times, in which case we all expect the lockers to be closed. Except we didn't see that. We saw that lockers number 4, lockers number 9, lockers number 16, lockers number 25, well, we didn't have 25 students the other day. Um, all the squared numbers seem to be touched an odd number of times and are therefore left open. And why is that? What's going on? Well, let's look at 16. Squareness is nice. What happens if we look at factors of 16? I see the numbers 1, 2, 4, uh, 8, and 16. And yes, factors should come in pairs. 1 is paired with 16, 2 is paired with 8, but here goes. 4 with a square number is actually paired with itself. So square numbers have numbers that are paired with themselves. That's what actually makes them square. 16 is 4 squared, which means we do not get an even number of factors. We get an odd number of factors. So 16 is going to be touched five times, which means its state is going to change five times. It was initially closed, so after five touches, it's going to be left open. 
9 is a square number. It has a factor that pairs with itself, namely 3. 3 pairs with itself. Therefore, it's going to have an odd number of factors. It too gets touched an odd number of times. It will be open. 4 has a factor that's paired with itself, 2 squared. It'll be left open. I guess you can even argue 1 has a factor that's paired with itself, so 1 will be left open. And so 25 and so forth will be open. 36, 49, da-da-da. All right. There's the puzzle explained. All the square numbers have an odd number of factors. Every other number has an even number of factors. Therefore, in this locker experiment, the square doors will be the ones that are left open. Now, let's put a little zing on this. Suppose um, I send the students down. You know, Sheng Han touched in that video every first student, then every second student, every third student, every fourth student, in that order. What if I send the students down this corridor in a different order? Will the order in which I send the students down the corridor matter? That's the first question. Second question. Suppose I decide I don't need to send every single student down. I want to get a desired outcome. What I'd like to do, I'd like to send some students down, so in the end, I would like locker number one to be open, and I'd like lockers numbers two, three, four, five, six. In fact, I'd like every other locker thereafter to be closed. So here's my puzzle for you. Which students should I send down so that locker number one is open and the rest of the lockers are closed? To get us started, clearly I have to send student number one down. Student number one is the only person that touches the first locker, so if I want it open, I need to send student number one down. But the trouble with doing that, student number one actually then touches every other locker as well and opens the ball. So I'm going to send down other students to fix that up, which means I've got to send down student number two, uh, because student two will touch this locker and then close it again. But the trouble is, student number two will then actually uh, not fix up every problem. So it looks like I need to send down student number three as well. That will fix up every third one, but oh, look what's going on. It's going to be opening this one. So then things get a bit chaotic. It looks like I don't send student four down. It's fixed, but what goes on thereafter? So what sequence of students should I send down so that the first locker is open and the rest are closed? That's a good, juicy puzzle. Thanks so much.